your take on Mandela, what will Mandela be remembered for? Oh, he's, he's been the running as the, uh, as the, uh, the greatest single political figure uh, that Africa produced uh, in the last hundred years. He's in the running. That doesn't mean he has won. If there's a competition in choosing who's the greatest political figure that Africa has produced in the last hundred years, Mandela would definitely be in the running. Yeah. There may be two or three others uh, in the running, etc. Uh, and in, in, of course, part of his uh, greatness was in the martyrdom. So he, because he was jailed and he refused to sell out while he was in jail, uh, and he became a cause of pan-Africanism in others. In fact, I have often stated Mandela is less pan-Africanist himself than the pan-Africanism he caused in others by his own suffering. So we, because he suffered, we all identified with Africa as a whole, though he himself may not necessarily be the most pan-African of us all. Uh, but he, he, he gains by ethical standards uh, and by fortitude across uh, the decades and by being in the running as the greatest single political African uh, of the last hundred years. His role in healing South Africa? Well, that's important. That's crucial, indispensable. Yeah. Uh, of course, there's a lot of healing still to be done in South Africa. So. His is, is an important part uh, of that, uh, and is part of his greatness. So the greatness is, in the first instance, with regard to his own country, the second instance with regard to its effect uh, on uh, the rest of Africa and the type of political causes it championed as a result of his imprisonment. Uh, and thirdly, the, uh, the readiness to be uh, brave and uncompromising even after he's released he was put a under a lot of pressure by the West to make other concessions which uh, he refused to do and those are plus signs uh, and then uh, for I personally I was very touched the first time I met him it wasn't even in South Africa although I met him in South Africa as well but it was in Dakar at the first summit meeting at which he attended, but not as a head of state. Yeah? He had attended because he had already been released, uh, and it was uh, 92, 1992. Uh, and in the corridors, uh, Nelson Mandela is coming this way, and I'm coming this way. Uh, I, I, of course, recognized him at once. I had no idea he, he knew me from anybody on earth. So I said, Mr. Mandela, and, and I introduced him. Uh, and then I said, uh, my name is Ali Mazrui. He's only recently been uh, released, and he said, oh, professor. And I said, how did this man know I'm a professor? He's been in jail all these years. In jail, he was reading and catching up with what was going on uh, in Africa. So one of the most flattering things in my life was to be recognized by Nelson Mandela after he had spent years in jail <laughs> and he had been reading me <laughs> in jail and was prepared to say uh, Ali Mazrui and he provided my title, professor. Uh, so I knew he knew me, although this is the first time we encountered each other. Uh, uh, so later on, I gave a major uh, proposal to publishers of the world. I said, let's choose the 100 great books of the last 100 years. Not 100 great men, but 100 great books of the, hundred, uh, the last 100 years. I made this proposal at a major meeting in uh, Zimbabwe. Fortunately, the publishers ran with it. They created the machinery to collect books, to examine it, etc. Uh, I was disqualified because I had made the proposal, <laughs> so none of my books were examined. But one of the books chosen was by Nelson Mandela, written on scraps of paper uh, in jail. Yeah? Uh, walk to freedom. Yes, walk to freedom uh, in jail. 
So that was regarded as one of the 100 great books of the last 100 years. So the people who created the infrastructure for choosing them, they said, we disqualified Ali Mazrui for any of his books, but we'll reward him that he presents the prize to Nelson Mandela. So if Nelson Mandela had given me the prize, that would be a compliment enough, but that I give him the prize. <laughs> and, and we did that. We did that in Cape Town at a huge ceremony and uh, rewarded him among his many things, just writing a book while in jail with his reflections was part of his own contribution. Uh, and we counted his book among the 100 greatest of the last 100 years. Are there other, any African leaders you would give kudos to? Whether current or retired? Oh, now you want to take me down the dangerous path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are, there are many leaders. I admire them for different reasons. Yeah? So, uh, so, so I admire Nyerere, uh, Sengo. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't choose from my own mm. presidents because that would be even more <laughs> invidious. But, uh, but among uh, African leaders who are not Kenyans, uh, I knew Nyerere very well uh, and we disagreed a lot in public. Uh, 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 but uh, we remained respectful of each other. Uh, with Sango, I interviewed him and uh, covered him in my writings and admired uh, his command uh, of language and, uh, and the fact that he could be a Christian president of a country which is nearly 95% Muslim and still be respected by the citizens of Senegal and not trigger demonstrations in the streets of Dakar saying, Allahu Akbar, get rid of this kafir. <laughs> that he, the, the citizens attacked him for his being too pro-French, for claiming to be a champion of negritude and African values, mm -hmm. and yet being uh, so far